Too many leaders lead for validation, not impact, for what they can get out of it more than what they can give to it. Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm obsessed with how leaders grow and develop, and I too have insecure moments. We all do. Glad you're here with me now on the Sight Shift Podcast so you can learn how to lead for impact, not validation. Right, so we're in a new series on the podcast or YouTube, wherever you find it, that leadership is easy, except for the people. And if you missed episode one, that's okay. These are all standalone, but you can go back and listen to the three shifts I talk about we go through as we engage this journey of making sense, peace with, that the vision isn't separate from the people. The people are the vision. I told you that story about when I was angry and frustrated and angsty and I was like, why won't the people just accept this vision? And my friend said back to me, Chris, the people are the vision. And that was a massive shift for me. I've built my life around it in some ways intentionally, in some ways unintentionally. This this like clarion call to me, drawing me out. In case you don't know me, I didn't introduce you in the series part one of this series, but my name is Chris McAllister. I'm obsessed with how leaders grow and develop. I've been dedicated to understanding that process for literally like 27 years now. I came to a crisis in my own life where I figured out I had built a leadership identity around performing and I was insecure. And as I've rooted that out and taken myself through a process of change, I've been able to do that with others. And now we have a team and an organization helping uh, other companies build leaders who build leaders. Now, here's what we're diving into today. We're talking about the three problems that happen when we're engaging this journey of actually trying to make sense of leadership would be easy except for the people. If we don't make the changes we need to that I talked about in episode one, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to paint the pictures for you and and as a wake-up call, help you understand the danger of what occurs. Uh, No one wakes up and says, I want to slowly drift from a place that I'm willing to sacrifice for the vision and see great things happen to a place of dread. No one wakes up and says, I used to be kind of calm, cool, and collected. Now I have these angry outbursts at my team, and and I want to be in that place. Nobody says that, and nobody wakes up and says, I'm in a place right now that I've drifted away from being caring into bitterness. So what do we do? What do we do if we're the kind of leaders who are going to have this check-in with ourselves? We're going to evaluate our mindset, and we're going to look within and go, hey, what's going on? Maybe I have drifted a little bit from sacrifice to dread, from calm to anger, from caring to bitter. How can I shift back into a place of being willing to pay a price for the vision, having meaning in that regard, being able to discern healthy direction, and there's a calmness, and being able to be the kind of person who builds healthy relationships, community that I'm caring, I'm not bitter. Here's how you're going to do it. I want you to watch out for these problem areas. And if you watch out for these problem areas, you're going to protect yourself. The first thing that you want to watch out for is when you lose heart, when you lose heart. This leads to, over time, a leadership breakdown. Now, it's normal as leaders to lose heart. Why? Because we're seeing something other people aren't seeing. Man, we're going at it. We're putting ourselves out there. We're in the arena. The sweat is on our brow. It's like, good grief. If people knew the insecurity, the doubt, the struggle, and I'm just trying to take this next step of courage, and then you're chewing on me for it, and you're critiquing me, and you're coming against me, and I want to get angsty about that, and I want to get frustrated, and I want to get insecure. And what happens is our mind gets consumed with, am I doing a good job, and do they like me? And nobody says, hey, I want to come to a place that I have a leadership breakdown. I had one years ago because I stuffed a question and a concern that I had. I shared this with you in episode one of this current series that I I really kind of lost heart for where I was. And rather than paying attention to that, I just kept going. Rather than learning to relate to the role in a healthy way or embrace a big change, I just kept going. And we value consistency. We value resiliency. We value grit. But if you're just getting to a place that you're going through the motions, you are setting yourself up for a breakdown. And that was actually what happened to me. I felt completely shut down and I I went for a run and this word just screamed into my consciousness. I still remember I'm running my heart out on this trail. I come to this open field and this word just pops into my consciousness. Stuck. I was stuck. I was stuck and I was literally having this 
uh, retreat, that my body was uh, signaling to me something must change. Now, most leaders don't lead to that edge, and that's good. It's like driving around in your car. You don't want to drive your car to empty and then always try to find the gas station. You know at a quarter of a tank, you need to pull over, or if you're charging, you need to get it uh, you know, replenished. So many leaders, though, value in a dysfunctional way running through empty, getting into that reserve and completely tapping it out, and they set themselves up for a breakdown. What happens for leaders is not realizing we have to maintain margin because there's a coming crisis that's around the corner. I mean, that's the challenge in nature of leadership. We're solving problems. There's going to be something new that's going to happen today, tomorrow, this week that wasn't on your radar. Yeah, that's going to present new opportunities, new expansive uh, potential, new ways you can grow and develop. And that's why we are leaders, because we are taking, you know, the chicken poo and turning it into something good. But that can't happen when our mindset is so stuck and in pain and hurting and we lose heart and we're not making meaning out of our actions. I want to give you like a really powerful understanding of being a leader who builds leaders. You have to be able to make meaning for yourself and teach others how to make meaning for themselves. And the make meaning question is so deep and powerful. I can make meaning at any given moment for myself and I can teach others how to make meaning for themselves if they can answer these two questions. Who am I and where am I? Who am I and where am I? Who am I is a question of identity. I am more than the roles I'm fulfilling. I'm more than my current circumstances. I'm more than my ideas, my inspirations, and my emotions. I am something. I can't always fully perfectly define it, but it's an expansiveness. We'll go deep into this in an episode, but the Greeks had the ship of Theseus example. When the ship leaves one port and it changes its you know, ship one board at a time, take a board off, put a new board on, it gets to port two, is it still the same ship? And they were wrestling with this idea of what is the essential nature of a person if we're always shifting and becoming and changing? And this is the mysterious paradox of all the wisdom traditions. You are something. You are. You have an identity. There is an essence and a being there. And it is also constantly changing. That's the stupid part about what's happening in society right now is we've set up this idea that you should find yourself. And we're just going to keep lengthening adolescence until people find themselves. You're never done finding yourself. There's a horizon shift always around the corner. And if you're not in a place that you can understand who you are, you're set up for a breakdown. And then where you are, where you are, situational awareness. I'm in, a, I'm in a season right now. I need to accept some reality. I'm in a season. I need to understand and explore something. I'm in a season. I need to spring into action. I'm in a season. I need to rest a little bit. Whatever season you're in, if you don't know, you can't make meaning. And if you can become the kind of leader who knows who you are and knows where you are, you can make meaning in any given moment. And guess what? When you teach others who they are and where they are, <laughs> you help them make meaning. That's what prevents leadership breakdowns. What you also see, if you don't go the, through the horizon shift, this leadership breakdown, if you don't go through the head shift, where you're committing to systems that are going to integrate these new learnings, your leadership capacity is busted. Your talent exceeds your character, and you blow something up in your life. Uh, you wing something that you should have prepared for. And so in those elite moments of performance, when you need to capture the room, when you need to uh, win the day, you weren't ready for it because you didn't prepare. You weren't willing to practice when the lights were off. You were living for the moment when the lights were on. And because you weren't practicing when the lights were off, when the lights were on and, and it was like, hey, pass me the ball, you hadn't developed yourself and you weren't ready. Now, yeah, you're going to miss shots. But part of a busted leadership capacity is how you deal with missing the shots. That my identity isn't on the line. I don't have to be insecure about it. Yeah, I missed that shot, but I'm going to get better. So I'm not winging it. I'm not just showing up in a way that I'm not prepared. I'm committing to the systems that help me get to where I want to go. There's a, there's a discipline that happens here. And oh my gosh, you bring that word up? People freak out. Here's why. 
People that are trying to take an authentic journey struggle with discipline because it feels like they're forcing something in their lives. People that are taking a hype journey distanced from who they are just say that the answer is discipline, discipline, discipline. No, the answer is a horizon shift. Desire. What do I want? Now I have a head shift. I build discipline around that desire. That keeps my leadership capacity from being busted. When I talk to a leader and their leadership capacity has busted, right? It's not just a breakdown, but something is busted. Then I'm starting to explore and ask questions about where did the discipline fall off the rails? And wherever the discipline fell off the rails is connected to, you get it, the desire. What do they really want? What are they going after? Now we all lose heart. We all lose our way in small and big ways. The key is how do we keep coming back to it? Years ago, in the before times, you know, when all that crazy happened in 2020, I had workout routines and systems and it was great. So then the world breaks and I can't do my routines anymore. Can't go to the gym. Man, I just lost, lost my way. It happened, right? I had a busted physical capacity in regards to fitness. And I found a system that you could buy these workout bands in this bar. It was so many minutes a day. It was a card. It gave you the four exercises. You flip it over. You do the other four another day. Loved it. Like, it's not easy to do, right? I had to be disciplined, but it was built around the desire of wanting functional health. I can see a horizon of my future of where I want to be physically. So I would do this system. Now, you know, <laughs> no mirrors. And so when travel started happening again and I was speaking somewhere and working out in a hotel room, you know, I was feeling really good about myself till I worked out in that hotel room gym, saw the mirrors, and I was like, oof, I got a much longer way to go than I realized. But I didn't have a busted physical capacity because I committed to a system. What's happening for leaders, whether it's a calendar system, an energy system, a thought system, the input systems, how much they got coming in, any of it. We, we have a breakdown. We have a busted leadership capacity. And if we don't have a horizon shift and a head shift and then a heart shift, we're going to have a breakup of relationships. So this breakdown leads to a busted capacity, leads to a breakup of relationships. Um, I, I really don't think this. I, I, I don't think any leader I've ever interacted with in succession, uh, um, in, in companies, they've ever said, you know, man, I want to stress test my family by pushing to the edge so hard that I might lose this relationship with my son. I really don't think they think that. I really don't think they live that way. I don't think that malicious intent is there, but yet they do things every day to sabotage the healthy succession of an organization, right? I don't think a leader wakes up and says, I want to have a team meeting where um, I am torn down and critiqued. Or I mishear the critiques and I can't hear them as a veiled request for help because of my own insecurities. I want to get a team that's out of balance. I want to get a team that struggles with going into the unknown together. But yeah, these are happening all the time. Why? Why don't we see more functioning, high functioning teams of, of, of true appreciation of each other in their zone of genius? Why do we see instead many more breakups, right? The success or failure breaks up the band in, in, in the rock world. The success or failures of the team break up the team. Yeah, you're going to have changes, but why don't we see more of that? Just like we don't see it often in rock and roll where the band continues for a long time because they haven't had the heart shift. They haven't learned to say, we're going to relate our way into a vision. We're committed to each other. And we're going to work this out. Yes, there's times that people have to move on, but we cannot lead people well when we're frustrated at them or judging them. And we're going to feel frustrated sometimes. We're going to judge sometimes because we're human. But when we do, we go back to the busted leadership capacity. We go back to the breakdown. We got to figure out who we are and where we are. What are our system upgrades and bring that into relational transformation? These are the three problems you want to watch out for in the journey of leadership. Thanks for joining me on this episode. There's always more for you at SightShift, S-I-G-H-T, shift.com, to be the leader you were meant to be.